Today I'm behind a wheel of a 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz and this vehicle is hard to categorize because it sort of looks like a crossover SUV. It also sort of looks like a hatchback and it sort of looks like a truck, all three combined. This is part of a brand new segment crossover compact truck and it competes with the likes of Ford Maverick and this segment really didn't exist before. So how good is this brand new Santa Cruz? Let me tell you more about it. Let's get started. All right, I'm behind the wheel. Let me tell you a little bit more about this brand new Santa Cruz and also tell you about how it drives. First of all, the bed is smaller than a midsize and obviously a full-size truck because this is considered a compact truck. So in terms of length, it's about four feet three inches. So not quite four and a half because the brand new Ford Maverick is about four and a half. This is a little bit smaller than that and obviously smaller than say a Honda Ridgeline which has a five foot bed. So in terms of bed length and width, not nearly as big as some of the bigger trucks out there. Now with that said, all Santa Cruz's they have a composite material bed, so you don't have to worry about scratches or dents or anything like that. You don't have to get a liner. It's already built in, which is really nice. The tailgate is dampened, which is also nice, but it's pretty light to begin with. And inside the bed, you'll find a set of rails on the side, so it makes it really easy to tie down your things. Also, you get a hidden trunk underneath. It reminds me of the one inside a Honda Ridgeline, but not as practical because if you open it up, you'll see it's not very deep. It's about maybe a quarter or a third of the depth of a Honda Ridgeline trunk, but it is there. So if you want to put smaller things, you can. And it's not going to flop around in the bed, so that's nice. But it is a little bit difficult to access because you have to fold down the tailgate and kind of reach in there right and and it's just not as convenient as a ridge line because ridge line has that dual action tailgate that you can open from the side too so even though it's there access to it is definitely much much harder and less practical because it's not very deep but it is deep enough for you to use it as a cooler so you can throw ice and drinks right and there is a drain plug underneath so that's pretty that's pretty cool and what's also really nice about this bed is the built-in cover. So you don't have to worry about getting an aftermarket bed cover. It's already built in. And it works pretty easily. If you wanted to fold it, basically you push on this lever and just push it. It just rolls up all the way. So you get open bed access. And if you wanted to close it, there is this strap and you're just basically pulling the strap and pull it all the way back and it's done. It's pretty heavy duty and I like that it's built in so you don't have to worry about spending even more money on top of your brand new truck. And once it's closed, it has a really clean look. It, you know, it's, it's level and it's not protruding out. I like it, I like it. So overall, the bed of the Santa Cruz, pretty useful, pretty practical, just not as big as some of the bigger trucks out there. Now in the beginning, I did mention that this Santa Cruz kind of looks like a crossover SUV, a hatchback and a truck. So it, it does look all, like all three things and that's what makes it really unique. So if you see one driving around, you go do a double take on it. You're like, what, what did I just see there? <laughs> so if you're looking at it from the front, it just looks like a crossover SUV. It looks like one of the other SUVs you find in Hyundai's lineup. It has a really unique look. The grille is integrated with uh, daytime running lights and there's several of them on either side. So it has that cool futuristic look. And then you have more lights underneath on the bottom bumper for your regular headlights, LED headlights and high beams. Now, if you look at a side view, this is where the Santa Cruz looks like a hatchback because it's not as high up as the SUV. It's raised a little bit. You can see that, yes, it's not as low as a sedan, but the overall look looks like a hatchback. And Hyundai added a few cues to make the Santa Cruz look more rugged, more like a truck. And you could definitely see the black molding, like especially around the wheels, 
right? And they're underneath the door, they flow into the back bumper and carries into the front bumper, right? Adds a little bit of ruggedness to the Santa Cruz. And also, if you look on top, this one is limited, so you see the black roof rails, right? And the window surrounds are also black. And I love that contrast with this white paint. So I think the side view is actually pretty unique and I actually kind of dig it. This Limited also comes with 20 inch wheels. They don't look like 20 inch, but they are. And overall, I think the front end and the side view, pretty good looking, pretty good looking. In the back also, if you look on the bumpers, they have built in steps, kind of like what Chevy does with their truck. So you don't have to get an aftermarket step, really easy to step on. And you know, you have some nice looking smoked taillights, also completes the look. So as you can see, from the outside, this looks like nothing else out there. It looks like three kind of cars combined together. Well, right now, I think that a lot of people may get turned off by this look because it's just not something that they're used to. But over time, I think people will get used to it and come to love it. Now, on the inside, it feels more like a sedan. It's very cozy in here. And when you're sitting here, you don't feel like you're high off the ground. It, it feels more or less like a sedan, maybe like a compact SUV, just slightly higher, but you don't feel like you're really above everyone. For some people, I think that's a great thing because it makes getting in and out very, very easy. But for some, uh, this may be a turnoff. Now, with that said, visibility is good all around. The front windshield, even though it's very raked, still plenty big. Same deal with the side windows. The blind spot is a little bit cut off because of the way the C pillar is designed. But luckily, this one does have blind spot monitoring, so you get little warnings in the mirrors. So that's not really an issue. In the back, you have a small window and a little window in the middle that you can actually open up, right? Just like a traditional truck. And when you're driving, you really forget that you're in a truck. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a truck. It just feels like a regular, you know, compact SUV, maybe a hatchback, and it feels normal. There's no bed rattle, there's no cabin shakes, nothing like that. This is a unibody construction truck. So you get all the benefits from that. And when you're driving around, it just feels, feels normal. Now I did mention about this cabin being cozy, right? These seats are really nice. They do hug you in. When you sit inside, you kind of like plop down in the middle. You're not sitting above the seats. So you're kind of sitting in the seat. And I do feel like they do a good job. You know, the side bolster, bottom bolsters, good job holding me in, except on a hot day like today really, really hot. So luckily this Limited does have ventilated seats, also heated seats and heated steering wheel. It's pretty standard these days. As for size, this is more or less like a compact SUV size. So up front, normally up front, you don't have a problem, but the my leg does hit the center console. It leans against it. So in terms of leg room, you know, hip room, just a slightly, a tad smaller uh, than I would say a normal, normal mid-size SUV, mid-size truck. Headroom is really good. Shoulder room is good too, but you do get that snug feeling in here. I do feel like the door panels are a little bit higher than normal. It gives you that illusion that you're more or less driving a sedan. Now in the back, you don't get a lot of room, but it's decent. I have five feet 10 and I have about two inches of leg room but a lot of headroom, so that's nice, about four or five inches of headroom. And because this is a truck, Hyundai built it like it. So you can lift up the bottom seats and you can see that there's hidden storage underneath like most traditional trucks, and that's good. Also, rear passengers do have a pair of vents, a pair of USB ports, and of course I mentioned that window, it does slide open in the back too. Now driving around the Santa Cruz, like I said, kind of feels like a, a compact SUV. Pretty comfortable, it's quiet. Not too quiet, but it is quiet, especially with the radio off. Uh, in terms of bumpiness, 
I do feel a little bit more bumps than usual, and it could be because of the larger wheels, 20 inch wheels. Normally, you know, that means there's less sidewall on the tires, but a little bit, slightly bumpy. But overall, it's just a nice, firm, enjoyable drive. Now, as for the steering wheel, I like the steering wheel. It looks good. It looks like one of their other steering wheels. It's like a two-spoke setup, futuristic looking. You get paddle shifters inside this Limited and the usual buttons to control your gauge cluster. Now, this one does happen to have a digital gauge cluster, so you don't have an analog one. Everything is digital, and it's just it's nice to have. And, of course, in the middle, you could select all the things that you want to see, like your trip, computer, navigation, radio, media, settings, all that good stuff. The steering feel also is pretty good. It's light but precise. Not a whole lot of wiggle room. So it does feel pretty good when you're driving around and tossing the Santa Cruz around corners. Pretty nice overall. Now, as for engines, there are two to the Santa Cruz. If you have one of the lower trims, the base engine is a 2.5 liter producing about 191 horsepower, natural aspirated. But on the upper trims, you get the more powerful 2.5 liter turbocharged engine and it's producing 90 more horsepower. So it's about 280 and over 300 pound feet of torque. And with this engine and all wheel drive, you could tow up to 5,000 pounds with this Santa Cruz. That's actually a lot, equals what you can tow with a Honda Ridgeline. So that's a big benefit. In a little bit, I want to test out zero to 60 because I hear the Santa Cruz is actually pretty quick too. Okay, so that wasn't zero to 60, about 20 to 60. It was okay. Um, I think the turbo setup inside uh, Ford Maverick, um, I think that's a little bit better. The, it felt faster, felt like there was more grunt. This one is okay. It takes a little bit to, for the turbo to spool up, then you're, then you're off the races, but it's not overly quick. I was actually surprised by the Ford Maverick because I thought, wow, that was actually <laughs> a pretty good or pretty fast little truck. Uh, this one is just kind of so-so. However, around town, I think this is more than adequate. The throttle feel, though, is a little twitchy. It's like you don't get a lot of power right away and then just an inch more and like, boom, you get like too much throttle. Um, so it's a little twitchy. It's not as linear as some of the other throttles out there. But overall, I don't think it's that bad. Once you get used to it, it's not gonna be a problem. Now, other things I didn't mention, well, you get a, another screen, a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It's pretty standard. Inside Hondas, you, you pretty much get the same setup. And that's not a bad thing. It, it's really responsive, uh, configurable. This one has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and all the usual stuff, You know, your car settings and all that stuff that you can configure this one also has a 360 view so if you're parking or you're pulling out or you just want to get a 360 view you press the button or you go in reverse and you can see there's many views one around your car and one's behind you side of you is also pretty useful when you're towing something so you do get it that inside this limited and also when you make a lane change you will see what's in your blind spot inside the digital gauge cluster too so that's a bonus. You also get a wireless charger, a couple USB ports and a plug up here, a traditional shifter, home link buttons, and a regular sunroof. So overall pretty well configured and of course all the safety features like adaptive cruise control, emergency braking, lane warning, you know all those things are standard. As for pricing, there are four trim levels to this brand new Santa Cruz. The base SE starts around 25,600, but if you want it all wheel drive, that's an additional $1,500. Next trim is SEL, right around 29,000. Then the SEL premium, a little bit over 37,000. And finally, you have the range topping limited, which is over $41,000. So in terms of pricing, there's a big gap. The base starts in the mid 20s, and the upper trim is in the 40s. So to conclude, let me share my thoughts about how this compares to a Ford Maverick, to a Honda Ridgeline, and to all other trucks out there. 
first of all, if you compare this to the Honda Ridgeline, it's it's definitely a different segment. Even though the Ridgeline is a crossover truck, it is definitely much bigger. A Ridgeline is more like seven eighth or four fifth of a full size truck. It is pretty big. It rides higher, a much better or bigger bed, I should say. Um, and also interior room, much bigger. You just feel bigger overall. So this doesn't really compete with the Ridgeline, although some people may put in the same category. This really competes with the Ford Maverick. And the Ford Maverick, after reviewing that, I love that truck. Even though it's a small compact truck, Ford did an excellent job, first of all, making it look more like a traditional truck. It drove well, especially with the turbo engine. There was plenty of space on the inside. And I like the bed too, even though it's not as big as a full-size bed, but it was big enough where, you know, it's very convenient and practical. So the Santa Cruz is definitely the smallest of the three. And it takes cues from both to kind of, you know, they, to, to make it into this, what, you're, what I'm reviewing today. In terms of looks, this, you could argue, looks more like a hatchback or SUV, which some people may like. But for a truck person, they normally like big, tall, aggressive trucks. And that's not what you get with the Santa Cruz. And unfortunately, the Ford Maverick also doesn't get that. But the Ford Maverick does look more like a truck than the Santa Cruz. And when you're driving around, the Santa Cruz sits lower to the ground. It feels smaller. The cabin feels more cozy. So again, if you're looking for a big, airy, tall interior cabin, you're not gonna get inside the Santa Cruz. But I will say this, because of the size and how low it is to the ground, it is really simple to park. In any tight spot, you know, tight spaces at your grocery store or wherever, very easy to maneuver. And you don't have the problem with a big, long truck, you know, backing in and out a million times. So that's a big bonus. Now, of course, the Santa Cruz does have its own advantages. For example, technology. There's a little bit more technology inside with the 360 view, with the you know, blind spot views. Also, the built-in bed cover, which is really nice. Um, I think that's a big plus, so you don't have to worry about installing your own and spending more money, so that's nice. And then you do have that trunk right inside the bed I mentioned, so that's something that you're not gonna find in the Ford Mavericks. And as for pricing, I think it's about right. The base trim does cost more than a base Maverick, um, but it costs a lot less than a base Ridgeline. So uh, I think Hyundai did the research, kind of priced it in between, and it really depends on what you're looking for. If there's one improvement with the Santa Cruz I like to see is addition of a volume knob. So what Honda did was integrate everything inside this dash, right? All these capacitive buttons. Uh, I wish Honda just threw a knob in there rather than force people to keep hitting that volume button up or down. You know, there's a little lag to it, but that's the one thing I wish Honda changed. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you tune in to my future review videos. Take care. Bye-bye.